Okay, welcome to the third video in the Gerboa uh, tutorial uh, series that goes over uh, one of the three workflows uh, that um, are embedded within Gerboa. Um, the previous two videos talked about uh, the slab program and the basement program that run through Energy Plus. And the first video talked about the installation uh, of Gerboa. And in this video, I'm just going over the workflow associated with creating and writing the IDF that includes um, Kiva Energy Plus objects. So there's no simulation in this. Um, we're basically starting with an IDF and ending with an IDF. Um, Usually where I would apply this uh, is, let me go to the Honeybee Energy tab here. Um, so you would usually have your, you would run your model to, run your IDF here and you would get an IDF out. Um, and then you have another run IDF on the other side. And the way that I think about this is basically um, taking the IDF from your model to OSM, plugging that into uh, the, you know, the left-hand side of the Kiva Foundation workflow, and then taking the output IDF, which has your, your Kiva objects written to it, and plugging that um, into the, um, the IDF on the other side. So, you know, of course, it would be uh, it would be ideal to um, write all of this into um, the IDF before we run it on the side. Um, for several reasons, I actually find it just easier to run um, the first IDF and then run it again. It doesn't take all that long. And um, partially the reason for this is it's much easier to start editing um, existing building functions than it is to be building new objects uh, related to grasshopper geometry into uh, the Kiva Foundation um, process rather than um, just using the geometry and the geometry assignments that have already come from Honeybee. So with that long-winded ex uh, explanation over, I'm just going to touch on and reference the uh, manual and documentation uh, document here. So um, there are installation instructions here. There's a couple of just overview of the cluster workflows. Um, this is a static reference to the Kiva program, which I should mention is a work in progress. Um, it's working in some scenarios. Uh, it, it's, working less well in others. Um, but you know, but I think it's kind of the nature of uh, a project like this is someone is going to have a better idea and um, maybe this will get someone uh, someone further uh, further along than where they started. Um, so I mentioned here in order for to, to sort of properly assemble this Kiva foundation, we need an existing IDF with existing IDF objects. Um, building objects, and specifically, we're looking for um, an IDF that has objects with um, boundary conditions of ground, and we're also looking for uh, objects that uh, have a floor. Basically, <laughs> we're looking for a, for objects for a building that has a, a, a slab, a relationship with the ground. Um, I'll also mention in here that further down in all of these component references, um, we similarly have uh, Kiva um, components that have input output references. Um, I did just want to touch on this note on Kiva. I, you know, there's a lot of inputs here, especially in the Kiva Foundation component, um, and I think they're not so intuitively uh, labeled or um, communicated. So I think these two diagrams um, are extremely elucidating. Um, and 
I would reference this when you're uh, looking over at this. One important uh, thing to note here is that in your slab and your um, basement wall constructions uh, or, or objects in the simulation, your construction stays the same. So if you have insulation in within your construction here, that will be included within the uh, the key the the the, um, the simulation, um, or be simulated in the idea. That these Kiva objects will not uh, override that. Um, so basically, beginning. Um, so anyway, that that is the that's a reference for. Um, for what is happening in the Kiva Foundation and all these interior vertical, exterior vertical, interior horizontal, exterior horizontal um, inputs and what they are describing. So we're inputting our IDF and this is getting, this is looking at an IDF that's next to the grasshopper file in the components folder. Um, or the examples folder, which is included in the download. Um, so here we're looking at, it's looking at this IDF. And we're running it. And what this is doing is basically extracting the names of the slabs. And so um, I have, uh, I've just used kind of, the, these are, these are, honeybee identifiers of slabs. So these are extracting those slab names. Um, it's inputting that into the Kiva exposed um, perimeter component, which uh, is basically telling, um, telling Kiva uh, how much of your slab is exposed to the, um, the perimeter of the slab is exposed to the, to the outside. Um, additionally, the Kiva settings component here is providing some um, soil uh, material information. Um, it's also providing some information about the simulation environment, like the far field width, which you can basically think of as how far away uh, the sort of size of the simulate, uh, simulation domain. So like this is a number in meters. Um, if I scroll down here to uh, settings, um, far field width is input in meters, um, deep ground boundary, you can also input in meters, but I would just leave it as auto select. Um, which actually looks at the elevation embedded in the EPW uh, to, to select the best method. Um, and so it, the far field width is essentially how far away from the basement wall uh, are we simulating from. So with these three strings, we're inputting that into the Kiva IDF generator. Um, we are looking, pointing at a path I've given a, at a, um, a path to generic folder called Kiva. Um, this is sort of where we'll be working in and writing our various uh, our, our various files to working files mostly. Um, our IDF is just getting passed from the Kiva preprocess over to the Kiva IDF. Um, the reason for this, so the Kiva preprocess is not actually doing anything to the IDF, but um, I just find it cleaner when, uh, you know, you don't have to be pulling multiple wires down and you can just sort of pass things from component to component rather than, um, you know, having two long wires coming down to, uh, coming down to this cluster. So the basement zone um, input is a very important input. Um, the reason for this being here uh, is, because when you're modeling the building, you want to make sure that the basement zone is its own zone. So for every, um, every object in this zone is gonna be considered and simulated um, using the foundation um, object or foundation um, outside boundary condition 
that Kiva uses. So it's important that the basement zone um, is modeled as its own zone. Um, and you can give that zone whatever prefix you want. Um, I've given it zone one. You can give it any, you can call it basement zone, and that's fine. But um, that's just a very important note for this, that every, every uh, surface object in the Kiva IDF is modified to point to um, Kiva objects and Kiva uh, simulation methods. So make sure to have your basement zone um, pointed towards um, your, your, make sure your basement zone is modeled as a single zone and you don't have other uh, zones wrapped up in that basement zone. Um, the foundation string is fairly explanatory. The perimeter string um, and the setting string. Um, then we just have uh, two uh, Boolean toggles here just uh, for write and run. Very simple. The writing is essentially uh, taking the uh, IDF from the place that you pointed uh, the Kiva preprocess to and uh, copying it over and um, make, turning it into a workable file in the Kiva folder. Um, the run is essentially then taking that text file, uh, you know, sliding all the Kiva, uh, the necessary Kiva objects uh, into it, um, and then writing it back to our IDF Kiva output, which you should find um, back in the folder that, um, that you specified here. So then the clear uh, essentially, we'll just clear out those um, working files that were put in the Kiva folder uh, that you specified here, or the, the path that you specified. I hope that makes sense. I know it's a little roundabout, but um, it's easier to sort of make a copy of these things, uh, edit them within these components, and then spit it back out and copy it back into the, the folder that we're looking to simulate from. So now that this, so I'll just plug a panel in here. This um, path is back in um, exactly where we want it. So I'm going to go look at my, oops, wrong spot. I'm going to look. So I'm, I'm here. I'm in my, um, I'm in my Jerboa um, folder that I downloaded. I'm going to go into the examples. Into the, into the Kiva example folder. And here you can see the Gerbro Kiva um, IDF has been written um, fairly recently. I guess maybe I it wrote when I opened this, but um, that's the new IDF that has been written. So whatever, whatever your original IDF name is, it should appear in the folder that you pointed it towards um, with the uh, suffix uh, of Kiva. Um, and then that can be input into the IDF um, input on the run IDF component in the Honeybee suite. And um, you should be able to rerun uh, that IDF with the Kiva ground heat transfer um, applied to it. 